Good happy morning, everybody. I hope you're all doing great. I'm happy to see you all here at this amazing event where we see tech developers, investors, companies, businessmen, community, everybody who cares about Web3 and technology is coming all to one place. And I'm sure that you're all aware when you want to do any project or start any business, there is something called feasibility study that you go and you do it and you make all the elements about the project and the calculations and many other important verticals. But my question here, have you seen any feasibility study that really have a part that talks about risk of the project on the community, on the society, how it will impact the environment? Usually when we see visibility study, we see just how we make money. What are the cost, expenses, profit, loss? There is nothing there ab about the community, about how we will impact the environment. And then when you look at the old financial schools that are exist now, also you will not find some a particular financial school that really cares and puts the community first before the profit and loss and the financial calculation. But in fact, there is a one financial school that cares about this, that never accept any project that have risk on the community, environment, or any um, human being or any, anything on this earth. This financial school exists since more than 1,400 years. And it talks always about how to balance any financial deal, how to take care about the uh, environment and humanity, how to put first that there is no negative reflection of any project on the earth and the people and anyone who lives on this earth. And then this financial school also, it highly follow the transparency, it highly recommend eliminating mediators, it highly cares about ethics and value. That's why it's a successful financial school that we never seen a single part of it that filed a bankruptcy since it started since a long time. This financial school is called the Islamic Financial School or the Sharia Financial School. Now, many people will ask, do we really need something called Sharia Financial School or Islamic Finance? Is it really needed? We have all great other financial school. Let me tell you some little figures so you know how much needed is this. First of all, the community who is really following the Sharia financial school, they are more than 1.9 billion from Muslims and from non-Muslims. It is not exclusive for Muslims only. And then, on the other hand, the market cap for, this, uh, is for the Sharia finance is expected to be 3.69 trillion by end of this year. The Islamic products and halal products, the market cap is four trillion. Total, we're talking about seven trillion dollars. We're talking about a community which is beyond 1.9 billion. We're talking about this community is really still underserved because most of the financial solutions that are exist at the moment, it needs physical presence. And then you need to open branches, you need to have um, people present physically and this eliminate the um, availability for all the people. It's not easy to reach them. You will find 51% and more of the people who follow the Sharia finance, they are unbanked. Check these uh, rates and numbers in most of the countries, but there is a reason why they are unbanked because in the past, these, um, the technologies that were at hand still underserving and still not really capable to serve and match all the verticals of these schools and its ethics and values. Now, we have the blockchain, we have the crypto, we have the Web3, and this is the best matching technology to serve this community. Now, if we don't use this tool at this time, at this era we are living, to serve the community best and to serve these ethics and values, 
we have a big responsibility, and that, will, and that will be really a big failure if we are not using it. That's why we thought to start our project, and we have built the first ethics blockchain called Hackchain, and on top of it, we have put the Islamic coin as a native coin of Hackchain. So the project has many components. So when we talk about the technology, um, the blockchain itself, it's proof of stake, it's very eco-friendly, and how to make it Islamic, we have a Sharia board, and the Sharia board, like most of the professional financial institutions, they have their own Sharia board. And if, even the non-Islamic banks, when you look at uh, many banks like Standard Chartered and others, they will have their own Sharia compliant products, and they will have their own Sharia board. Our Sharia board is sitting in more than 50 banks Sharia board. They're one of the steamed in the, in the market now. And they are the one who issue the certificate and fatwa and make sure that we are a Sharia compliant. So we have the technology part, we have the Sharia part. We have also the philanthropy part because we feel there is a responsibility to give back to the community and to serve the community. That's why we have um, done it in a way where 10% of every minted coin goes to Evergreen DAO. And Evergreen DAO will serve the community and give grants to their projects and give grants to the charities and support the humanity all over the world. So we talk about technology, we talk about the Sharia, we talk about the uh, philanthropy part and the Evergreen DAO. Now what's more needed when we build up a Web3 project or when we start introducing blockchain or crypto, is this enough to capture the community trust? Well, still not enough. We need people from the professional financial institutions to be with us and to recognize the project. That's why you can see in our executive board um, the first Islamic banker in the world, Mr. Hussein Al Miza, he's co-founder for Dubai Islamic Bank with uh, Sheikh Saeed Lota since a long time. It's the first Islamic bank in the world. You see Hamis Buharun, who was, he is the ex-CEO of Abu Dhabi Islamic Bank. You see Peter Rafferty, who was serving in Abu Dhabi Investment Authority for more than 22 years. It is a fund of more than $600 billion. In the advisory board, you will see the Royal Highnesses from Abu Dhabi, Dubai, and soon from other countries joining the project. This is enough components to give trust to the community that this is a real project and people will not gamble with their name in something fake. But let's look at the other side. Let's look at the calculations and financials and numbers. We started the project with the private sales. We didn't do ICO, IPO, IEO. We don't want to collect at the early stage of the project. We don't want to collect money from the community. That's why we went for private sales. We targeted funds, venture capitals, individuals who knows where they invest their money and how to do the due diligence in a smart way. And private sales ended up with more than $400 million in this beer market. And also on the other side, we have done a lot of partnerships with a lot of steamed entities in the world. Fambras is the world's largest halal certificator entity. We signed the agreement with them. DidiCab is also our partner. They are serving more than 300 banks all over the world. And Holiday Swab is one of the biggest uh, tourism uh, uh, companies in the world. And then I want to announce something very important today that also we have signed, and this is the first time we, we talk about it, we have signed a partnership with CoinDesk Indexes, and this is a very uh, interesting and promising. And we are uh, focusing there on many Sharia compliant products, including uh, ETFs and more other. We have also signed an interesting partnership with Republic Crypto. All of you are in the Web3 know them very well. I don't need to tell you who they are, but this is also uh, part of the success stories and this is also part of the science that makes us very uh, Confident that the project is moving in the right way and it will catch very good Achievement on the other hand. Let's talk about utilities because a lot of people asking this you build something great You're doing something good good technology Sharia and everything, but what people will use it for 
why people will buy or will get Islamic coin while they will get to hack chain. What are the utilities for the people who follow Sharia finance ethics and values? When you look at all what is happening in the decentralized, in the centralized world, in all Islamic banks, Islamic funds, Islamic finance, all the project products they are providing, we look at the lifestyle. We are not providing just a one financial pro, uh, product. When you look at the Sharia, it is a lifestyle way for everyone. It takes care about financial side, about social side, about um, environment, about education, and many other sides. So we are moving this lifestyle that's happening in the centralized world to the decentralized world. If we look from Sharia finance point of view, there are many products for exchanging um, loans or uh, getting into partnership like Mudaraba, Musharaka, Murabaha, Muqayada, many products uh, will be happening in our uh, blockchain, which is the best matching tool because smart contracts is one of the best tools to serve this. This all can be converted into smart contracts, even inheritance. When somebody passes away, I hope we all will, will have a long life, but we see a lot of problems and cases at the court. And there is a very clear formula in Sharia finance for inheritance. We deploy this in a smart contract, and once the uh, death certificate uploaded to the smart contract, it will be auto-distributed. Look at the Zakat fund, which is a must donation. And for people who don't know Zakat, Zakat is a must donation in Sharia finance. It's 2.5% of any resource that you own and you're not using it for more than 12 months. Then there is a social responsibility on you to give to the poor people 2.5%. And how it is happening now, it is happening through some of the Zakat funds, but what they come back to the donators, they come back with Excel sheet, and we cannot verify whatever happening, whether the people really receive, they don't receive, you don't know. But when you do this over the blockchain, when you use the uh, wallets and you connect that with the digital identity, then you can really have a full transparency on what is happening. But more than this. Let me tell you something. When you do any project and you want to measure the success factors, you always look, what I am providing to the community, is it a good, good to have or must to have? If it is good to have, you spend more effort to convince people. What we are doing for all people who believe in Sharia finance and ethics and values, it's a must to have. And blockchain and technology it's serving this the best way. So if I'm providing to the community with more than 1.9 billion, the best technology in much easier way, in more reliable way, and in a very efficient way, and it is a must to have for them, of course, they will adopt it and they will use it. That's why we see today downloads of our hack wallet exceeded 1.5 million downloads, and still we didn't list the coin on exchanges. You see the people following the project more than in all social media, more than 1.7 million, and still we are not listed on the exchanges. So there is a huge adoption when it comes to this. There is a huge value. Aside of the financial part, we are also building a lot and having a lot of products, uh, not only from us, but it's also coming from the community, and that's what we want and that's what we encourage that these products, it's also taking care about different sides of uh, Sharia uh, ethics and values. We are building something called Hack Social, which is a clean social media that keeps our eyes clean and keep our families in the right path to look at the good things and not just watch something that pop up from here and there that doesn't go with people who cares about ethics and values. We are also building ethical gaming. We are also focusing on education and we build the Hack uh, Academy for anyone who wants to study and learn what is blockchain because we have to admit still the awareness about Web3 it, at its very lowest stage when we look at the all people in this planet, majority of people, they don't really know about it. So that's why we built the academy. People can learn blockchain, can learn crypto, can learn Web3, can learn Sharia finance, and it is for free. We have done a partnership with the 
International Islamic University in Malaysia. And this is rarely happened in uh, crypto projects with uh, blockchain and cryptocurrency. And all the people who will go through this academy, they will get a certificate authorized and stamped from the International Islamic University and another esteemed institutions. So this is also part to spread the awareness. And this awareness not only for our project. When we spread awareness about blockchain and Web3, it is for the whole ecosystem and how to enrich it. We also encourage all the tech developers. We are doing hackathon soon in Dubai. So, and we have done one in Turkey. Hopefully, one day we'll do one also here in this amazing country. And we are encouraging the tech developers to participate in it to come up with amazing results in reaching the ecosystem. And we are also, um, from the last hackathon, I saw many products that are really amazing that has been built in a very short time. And some of the products built around Sukuk. And Sukuk is the Sharia compliant bonds, uh, if you don't have idea about it. And it is a very huge market cap. In Dubai itself, it is more than 70 billion market cap. So I will not make it long. What we are building, it's all about ethics first, values, community, environment. It's for more than 1.9 billion community, for a market cap of the finance and halal products of more than 7 billion. And it's coming to the exchanges very soon. So please feel free to interact with the project, to put your ideas, to join and apply and get uh, grants from the Evergreen DAO. Thank you very much for listening. If anyone having any question, I will be available after the speech. Thank you very much.